Everyone says Targaryens are closer to gods than to men. But they say that because of our dragons. Without them, we're just like everyone else. What we really tried to do was create a world where dragons existed. At this point in the history, there have never been as many dragons in the world since the time of Old Valyria, when there were a thousand dragons alive. That's quite a lot of dragons, but, you know, dragons are born, dragons die, dragons hatch. George really wanted the dragons to be colorful. I thought that was great, the, the idea that dragons are reptiles, and if you look at reptiles, they traditionally have very, very colorful coats. In the original series, dragons had lived at that point for 150 years, and when they're born, it's this miracle. Blood of my blood. Whereas in our world, not everybody has seen a dragon, but they are around, and they certainly, if you live in King's Landing, you've seen many of them fly overhead. The core of any Targaryen is a dragon. They're extremely powerful, and without them, we would not be the house that we are. They're treated with fear and reverence and awe, but they're also used as threats. There's a kind of detente that exists when a force has such an overwhelmingly dominating power like dragons. They're weapons of mass destruction. The reason that the Targaryens are considered as being closer to gods is because of their dragons. You got the dragons. Are you going to use the dragons? Are you going to burn entire cities and armies or try to? Dragons! That's a big step for any king or lord or, or, or claimant to try to take. We also want to have the dragons be their own characters. The first dragon you meet is Cyrax, which is Rhaenyra's dragon, who at this point is a young adult. Cyrax was hatched to Rhaenyra when she was a child. I think the dragons that are born to their riders have a shared deeper bond than any of the other dragons. We kind of approached her like a bird of prey. So she's an eagle, she's built for speed, she's very proud and honorable. Caraxes, is the blood worm. Damon's dragon is quite another thing. Vicious, some would say. Short-tempered. Yeah, maybe the dragon and the rider have a little in common there. Save me! Oh! Caraxes has burned a lot of people and seen a lot of battles, and it has earned that name of the blood worm. Another major dragon, I think, that you would have to say is, of course, Vagar. Vagar is the oldest, largest dragon in the world. Certainly the largest dragon you've ever seen on Game of Thrones. Queen Alicent's second son, Amond, claims Vagar, an act that actually inflames the dislike between the two branches of the family even more. <laughs> Vagar is kind of old and falling apart a bit. The way we've approached dragons in this story is to say that dragons never stop growing, they just essentially grow until they die. And part of their death cycle is getting too large, too big for the world. And Vagar is so large that she doesn't really fit anywhere anymore. We, in, in our story, she doesn't even fit in the dragon pit anymore because she's grown so large. And that's created a bit of a loner personality to her. And she's very grumpy, she sleeps a lot. You know, she's like an old cat. Doharas. Cyrax. What we did a lot of work on was creating dragon infrastructure. The dragon pit was meant to be a, basically a stable for dragons, but dragons being big, it's an enormous structure. There are dragon keepers to look after and tend to the dragons. They have their whole own culture and mythos to them. There's dragon saddlery, so saddles are built to, to hold the dragons. Dragon eggs are the gateway to power. New offspring in the Targaryen line receive a dragon egg in the court. Hopefully that hatches and then they will be sort of joined for the rest of their life. I think it's quite interesting the way that the dragon eggs are described as only being partially successful in hatching. There's half of them don't ever actually hatch. You've come for the egg. Here it is. The story of House of the Dragon is a character-driven story with a lot of dragons. Everybody knew that if you messed with the Targaryens, you would get the dragon. So nobody dared to overthrow them. And at this time, the only thing that could tear down the House of the Dragon was itself. Fire is such strange power. Everything that House Targaryen possesses is owed to it. Yet it has cost us both what we love. Dracarys! 